to see more RVs and RV related products, be sure to check out socialmedianomads.com. Alrighty guys, so this is the Super C. This is with the Volvo chassis. Um, the actual grounds where we were at were right over there and uh, Jeff gave us a ride. Um, as I said before, he works with the Volvo chassis. So this is the same uh, manufacturer, Hallmark, but this is with their Volvo chassis. Come on in, man. All righty, thank you, sir. How's it look back here, G? I love it. I love the layout. <laughs> it's really awesome. Is it pretty similar to the one that we saw? No, it's really different. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this does not have the bunks in it. Oh, okay. All your GPS, backup monitors, satellite, AM, FM radio, phone, Bluetooth. This one has full tandems on it, so you get the locking full locking rears when you get into like a race infield or a campsite that might be a little bit too soft you can actually lock the rears in and have four wheel drive now we're inside the cockpit of the Volvo chassis uh, on a Hallmark motor coach notice the big the big features on the Volvo chassis is very everything's very automotive friendly once again you have your driver display in the center that's all digital um, you don't have a lot of the round chromy gauges all over that makes it more like a truck these are very, um, uh, again, uh, recognizable. You know what the switches are going to do. You know what the gauges are. Um, nothing is confusing. Um, your backup camera, your GPS system, satellite radio, Bluetooth, phone controls, um, uh, automatic power heated power windows, heated power mirrors. You've got a uh, windshield defroster. On the front, uh, sort of like you do on a rear defrost in a car. This has the electronic heat strips on the front windshield, keeps your ice build up off of the windshield. It's got a chrome package on the on the hoods. Uh, very aerodynamic. Um, fuel mileage average on a Volvo is usually between eight and a half, between eight and nine miles per gallon, which is um, very good in this kind of industry. We're just going to drop it down into drive kick off our parking brake. You do have a trailer air supply for pulling heavy weight. We have up to a 40,000 pound capacity on our trailers. Obviously full power steering. Twelve speed automated transmission which is an ice shift the benefit on the Volvos is Volvo is the only manufacturer that manufactures the truck, the engine, and the transmission. So all of our communication is the same. We work off the same ECM. Um, no other manufacturer can do that right now. For example, if you if you buy a Brand X and they have a Cummins engine with an Eaton transmission, you have a different manufacturer's computer talking to a Cummins engine computer, talking to an Eaton computer, and a lot of times the communication gets messed up. On the Volvo truck, we have the Volvo engine talking to the Volvo transmission, talking to the Volvo truck, and we all speak the same language. Volvo trucks are built and manufactured in Dublin, Virginia. 95% of the Volvo truck is still built here in the North American market. Probably one of the highest percentages of any manufacturer in the country. Engines are built in Hagerstown, Maryland, along with the transmission. One thing we do still get shipped over from the Sweden parent company is our panels. They're still stamped and shipped over. Everything is seam welded. It's an all steel structure cab. Um, it's in a roll cage kind of uh, setup. So uh, we go through the Swedish impact test, which is one of the most stringent uh, testing that a, that a cab goes through. Most of the time when you're talking about a Super C, the absolute biggest benefit of a Super C is the safety features and the protection of your family. When you look at a fiberglass motorhome in a front-end collision, 
normally about the first 10 to 20 feet of the oak motorhome will explode and disintegrate. Uh, on the Super C truck chassis, there's so much safety zone in the front with our engine being in the front. Our double frame rails on a Volvo, they're cambered outward, so on a front impact, they actually bend outward and absorb the energy to protect the people in the cab. During the testing, they drop a 15,000 pound pendulum from 30 feet in the air onto this A pillar to test the structure strength of it, and it does not break. Never been in any vehicle that shifts like the way this does. It's very automotive, seamless kind of shifting. Absolutely. Um, everybody talks about how how smooth the Allisons are, and Allisons are a great transmission. In price comparison, you're talking about 15 to 20 thousand dollars more just for the transmission when I have as good a ride quality and better features uh, when you're talking engine braking, communication with the transmission, um, hill brake assist, cruise brake assist, all of that is uh, something that only the iShift offers. So how much of the actual, or if any, of the trucking industry with the Volvo how much of it's been transitioned into this, this Super C or it has any of it at all? I would say between all the manufacturers that I supply, um, since since 2010, I would guess there'd be about uh, 11 to 1,300 RVs manufactured since 2010. So a pretty good sized market that's growing. Um, 2014 was very, very good for us, and they're looking for a lot of good things in 2015, almost double is what they're projecting. But they are becoming very popular at all the, all the Tampa RV shows, um, uh, RV shows around the country. We always have a big line at the Super C, because not, not a lot of people know about them. Um, they're always question, had a lot of uh, good questions. They seem to be very excited about the product and what the product can do for them. I'd say so far at this show, the this was probably the uh, biggest surprise for me was, yeah. was, was the Super C's and just how how well they're put together and how how they provide such a good option for people. Well, our wall structures, another thing that is, uh, is so much better than most of the constructions in the in the industry. Um, they have a gel coat on, on a B board that's vacuum, vacuum sealed um, with an uh, that's a vacuum sealed with an aluminum interior that gives us such a high grade of structure strength. I've actually had customers that that have had one of these that rolled it over, rolled it completely over back on his wheels, and they drove it to the dealership after it completely rolled over. And that's like what, what you're doing there. That's that's automatic, like all uh, all automatic. Yep. Like it, it feels like you're shifting gears. Like it, you know, like it's so smooth. That's, that's yep. awesome. But you know, coming down the hill, I'll never get out of a gear. You see those off ramps of runaway trucks that they always have. You never have to worry about that with an automated transmission. It takes care of everything itself. It takes care of it all itself. The Volvo windshields are a one-piece windshield. We've got the greatest visibility of any Super C uh, truck on the market. And this is a heated windshield as well. They are heated. Yes. It seems to handle itself really well with braking as well. You don't have to fight the traffic like you do in a lot of the uh, regular RVs. When you're going down the road, um, you are you are king of the highway. Another comfort feature on the Volvo truck is we have the same decibel level inside the cab as a Lexus car when they can go on 60 mile an hour down the road. And you don't you don't have to scream and yell at each other. Although the, the wife might be screaming and yelling going down the highway in traffic, <laughs> it's not necessary. No, it is not. 
this is a this is actually a big test right now because we're right next to the Super Show. We are. And coming in this morning, traffic was pretty much stopped. So we're having this big rig go through traffic. This is this is a really big test. Sort of like Moses in the Red Sea. Everybody <laughs> sort of gets out of our way. <laughs> And in terms of uh, width, as we're going down the road, what is this comparable to? Uh, just a regular semi truck or a regular or RV. We are 100, um, 102 inches wide, which is the legal limit. 45 feet long, bumper to bumper. I think that's just a uh, a bit wider than my 32 foot Class A. Yeah, usually your just, Class A's are like 96 to 98 inches in comparison. Some of the braking features on the engine brake. When you roll, if you can imagine driving through San Francisco downtown and coming to a red light, most of the most of your red lights are on a hill. On a Volvo high shift, they have a hill brake assist where it will actually lock the brakes in until you give it enough fuel to break away from that incline, or you can actually turn the hill brake off and release it. That way you don't have to roll backwards on the stop. And that works both in forward and reverse. It also has a cruise brake feature where if you've got your cruise set at 65 mile an hour, you can set your cruise brake from one mile an hour over up to nine mile an hour over what your cruise is set at. And if you're coming down a hill, it will automatically set your engine brake at whatever capacity needed to keep your vehicle within that speed. That way you don't have to uh, run away or uh, have to burn your brakes up coming down a hill. That's awesome. Again, of that, a lot of that technology goes back to the communication benefits that we have from having the same communication across the board. Super Show traffic jam. I mean, in terms of uh, actually having some sight as you merge right here into this traffic, you really don't have are, a blind spot. Yeah, blind spot, Chris. That's you even have additional up top. That's very impressive. How's Grandma like the ride back there? I think you better speed it up. I'm going to sleep. How are you? Hey, <laughs> that means it's comfortable, right? Couches are awesome. How was it back there um, in terms of going over bumps and everything as Super we're riding? Smooth. That's a nice hug, right? And it, like, if I close my eyes, it's really fun. Okay. <laughs> it's really Not too bad for a 45 foot. Oh, it's crazy. I'm, like, shocked. What do you think of that leather back there, Grandma? <laughs> it smells new, doesn't yeah, it? Awesome. I'm guessing that's even a pull-out bed as well right there. That is. That's a pull-out queen-size bed. <laughs> so she was saying earlier when we first got here that uh, she didn't like feeling claustrophobic in these RVs and definitely I don't see how anybody can feel claustrophobic back there. All the amenities of home while you're driving down the road. I think like uh, as as we were going along throughout the uh, the show, I was very impressed with how people have been able to pull that off. But I think like cost wise and safety wise, this seems to be like the best option. It's like, the most the, economical the when you're talking. 
the benefits and features that you that you're able to purchase in a Super C. You have the safety, you have the the fuel economy, you have the durability, you have the comfort, the luxury of a of a high end motor coach that. When you're when you're when you're looking at the these are compared a lot of times to the Prevos and the bus market. And when you're talking a, a Prevo, just the bus shell, which we're looking at one right in front of us, Chris. Absolutely. That bus shell coming off the factory with one slide out is four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Goodness. Just for the shell. Just for the shell. Just for the shell. And that's just because they don't have any competition in that market. So this coach that we're riding in right now, um, again, we haven't toured the outside. I'll go ahead and link the tour we did to a different model, but it's made by the same manufacturer, exactly. right? Exactly. So I'll go ahead and link that to that. And so the one we're riding in right now, it's comparable a little bit. This one doesn't have the bumps. How much is the coach we're riding in right now? This MSRP is about 510000 Actual sale number will probably be in the 470, 480 range. So. You can either buy a bus shell, or you can be, a, or you can buy a completed motor coach with all the amenities and luxury that you would that you would find. So in, in your high-end motorhomes. In terms of safety, that bus that we that we're seeing right up there in that bottom right-hand corner, um, how is the safety of that bus compared to the Super C? Well, let me give you an example. I had a customer call me back in 2005. He was driving a Volvo truck. He actually had a fleet of FedEx trucks that he was driving, that he had. Had a driver that fell asleep at the wheel, doing 60 mile an hour, and he was coming into Monroeville, Ohio, at a red light where it went from 60 down to 35 mile an hour. There were two loaded dump trucks filled with salt, it was in the wintertime, that was stopped at this red light. The driver never touched his brakes, hit the back of the first dump truck, knocked it into the ditch, hit the front dump truck, and pushed it through the red light, okay? Now you were loaded down with 60,000 pounds of salt in the truck that this guy hit at his, from, his, from driving 60 mile an hour to a stopped truck in the light. Now if you're driving a bus, or, or God forbid you're driving an RV in that kind of uh, motorhome, in that kind of situation, you're dead. There's there's no saving you because you're the first on the scene of that accident. When you're driving up on the windshield, there's nothing there in front of you to protect you. My customer's driver walked away from the scene of that accident and was driving two days later and never lost his life. Was able to go home and kiss his babies and tell them that he loved them. In a, in a bus or an RV application, that's not going to happen, Chris. Beautiful vehicles, they do a wonderful job. And if you're in the market to buy a $2 million vehicle, there you go. That's that's for you, huh? <laughs> I, I like to spend my money a little bit more wiser. <laughs> and I like to protect my family. Yeah, I mean, the, the first thing that, that G and I saw as we walked up to this thing yesterday, the first day of the show, was just how much it looked like a semi. Yep. And you know, it just seems built extremely well. And I'm sure working on these is much like a semi where with the, with the rear engine, you have to get in there, you have yep. to kind of deal with a lot of space issues. But with this, is this one of the models where the hood actually lifts up and you have full access to the engine? Absolutely, and I'll show you that feature when we get stopped up here. You have, in a motor home or a bus, you have to, uh, find a place first that will even work on it. Secondly, if they have to get to the top side of the engine where they have to get into the uh, cylinder heads at all or the rocker arms or anything of that nature, they have to come into the top side, which is the only way to get there is through your bedroom floor. So they come up into your truck or your, your, your home, they rip out the floor of your bedroom just to get it into the work on your engine. On a Super C, I know the front of my truck into any truck stop, any service facility, and it's right there in the median area for them to work on. 
there's over 400 different locations in the North American market for Volvo service centers that you can find to work on. I know of maybe three of maybe four places that are specified for Prevo service centers around the country. You can get over how smooth that transmission is and how that's an automatic. Boy, it's nice. And Hallmark does such a wonderful job with their combination with their body mounts to their truck mount where they have such a quiet, don't have a lot of air noise um, around, the, uh, around the bunk unit or around the cab. Everything is very quiet. Very well done. Actually, wasn't that bad at all, merging into traffic, but I guess people want to get out of your way, huh? That's right. <laughs> I'll win that sense. battle most of the time. <laughs> you said you actually own one of these yourself, and you do a lot of a lot of traveling. Um, say like on a five hour five hour ride if you've done one before how how does the comfort stack up and how does it work for your family on the longer drives if you do take longer drives well we just did a trip uh, a few weeks ago we left Mansfield Ohio on a Saturday night after a concert and had to set up in Kansas City Missouri on Sunday morning for another concert which was about an 11 hour drive and um, we're, we're blessed and fortunate to be able to have four or five gentlemen in our in our group that that help drive. So we took a couple hours shift apiece and still was able to get our, our rest and our sleep. And um, we set up in the morning for the church service and had a great concert and um, felt rested. So that's perfectly fine. Like doing those long trips, there's enough room, enough space, and it's comfortable enough to where everybody can get their rest exactly, in. Exactly, exactly. Our, our floor plan is set up more for an entertainer coach, so you have the bunks and the lounge area so people can watch TV going down the road, get up and make them a sandwich, um, get, a, get a bottle of water out of the refrigerator, grab some snacks out of the pantry, sit down and play a a game of euchre at the table or something. Oh yeah, good old euchre. Good old euchre. Good old Midwest. <laughs> we need to teach you some euchre, Grandma. Oh, yeah. That's our family game. Of course, the kids are in the back of their bunks on their iPads and their tablets and their phones. And I shouldn't say just kids. Most of the adults are in the same way. So as we uh, as we come back into the the fairgrounds, we look over here and we see a lot of Class A's. Do you, do you see in the, the future the, the Super C? I mean, if, I'm sure you're more biased towards the Super C, but do you see people starting to shift towards this type of RV, or is it going to take some time, or what, what are you seeing with that? That's been the biggest growth of our industry in the Super Cs is people coming over from the um, standard RV use because um, they, do, they do see a lot of benefit in the safety side and um, maybe have seen on the news where a motorhome is burnt down from the engine catching on fire because of it being so hot in those rear engine designs. Um, just two weeks ago, some good friends of ours that travel and sing, um, their bus caught fire and, and burnt to the ground. And um, it was very fortunate that none of them were in the vehicle at the time. And that's that's from having that rear engine. So I'm guessing with this front engine, um, there's more air, there's more cooling going on here, whereas with the rear engine, there's obviously more heat being generated because it doesn't have as much airflow. Exactly. We have direct airflow, natural airflow coming into the front of the truck that um, naturally cool the engine down. We run about 20 to 30 degrees cooler just because we have the front engine Front, front engine design. And with, with these diesel engines, does the heat, I mean, I've, I've I'm traditionally know about gas engines, but with diesel engines, does that extra 20, 30 degrees, does that affect the longevity of the engine? Oh, absolutely. And you're, and without the airflow, I mean, we still have airflow that's even around that. I'm talking internally, the engine runs that much cooler, but externally, you, you're, you're thinking, think of wires and hoses and seals. When you're in a rear engine mount design, it's like an oven back there, Chris. And over a, over a short period of time, that extreme heat is going to do a lot.
lot of damage to your hoses and your wiring where your wire's going to get brittle, your hoses are going to get uh, uh, to where they start cracking and leaking, your seals are going to start cracking and leaking. On a front engine uh, truck design, we don't have that, that, that issue in the same manner. We have a lot more longevity out of our parts because we have a lot more cooling around the engine side of it. That's why we, these are these are a million mile vehicles. There's nobody in this lot that can claim a million mile vehicle like we like we have proven. Absolutely, because from what I understand with the Class A's, with those gas engines, basically the longevity of the engine is times everything by two of what you normally expect from an engine. Like, because the, the weight, the, the towing, like basically when, from, from my own research, what I found is with the gas engine of my Class A, is I bought it with 14,000 miles, but I should look at it more as 28,000 right. when it comes to the longevity of the engine. When you come, when you when it gets down to the longevity of an RV engines, 100, 200,000 miles is about a max, and that's a lot of miles I know for for the standard RV person. But with, if if you're planning on putting very very many miles at all, and you're uh, uh, living in your RV coach. Man, you want to have that, that peace of mind that you're not going to have engine troubles because that's where a lot of your cost comes in um, when you have to start doing engine repairs. So it's just kind of invest in the initial and then not have to worry about it or even pay more later on down the road. Exactly. Your investment up front and your resale value on these hold. You, you lose about... 20% maybe on a, on a Super C or on a standard RV, you're going to lose 40 to 50% of your value as soon as you drive it off the lot. Um, look at your papers all day long uh, and go try to trade your RV in. They're, they're not real gracious when they start giving you trade-in values on a, on a regular RV. We have a lot of customers that will purchase these and within four or five years, they they uh, sell them outright to some friends of theirs that that see them and, and just think, man, that's, that's really the way I want to go. And they've almost made their money back from what they paid for it or knew. So your, your personal experience, do you mostly do uh, RV lots? Like, do you go to the campgrounds or do you do more of the, uh, the Walmart? You know what? We're we're going from place to place. If we're not staying in a concert venue or a church um, parking lot, we find the WalMarts, Chris. They they are very friendly to the um, to the RV industry and the bus industry. So it, yours is forty five foot, of the same it as is. this. It is. So how is it maneuvering in and out of WalMarts and campgrounds in one of these? Not a problem at all. We have a, on a on a Volvo truck. You have a fifty degree wheel cut, which is the tightest turning radius in the industry and uh, you just don't have that have a problem maneuver you have to take your time obviously you're, you're a 45 foot long vehicle you uh, you, you learn how to uh, drive it responsibly and, and and realize that there are people in the back that are depending on your driving habits as for their comfort so in terms of the uh, instrument cluster here like this is all new for me and I'm sure a lot of people watching this have never seen an instrument cluster like this. So what, what are we working with here? Well, you have all of your window and your mirror controls on this side over here that are, um, again, they don't have a lot of sharp edges, uh, a lot of uh, damaging uh, kind of experience. But everything is, you have your door handle here, your locks, um, windows, mirrors, you have your tilt and telescopic on a foot lever down here on the bottom that will come right up to you. Oh wow. You have your steering wheel, smart wheel, um, headlight, tail light courtesy switches. Um, let's turn it back around. Here's your radio controls, your Bluetooth phone controls, you have your city horn, you have your air horn. Um, people can hear you coming. Then you have your headlight controls, which is you have automatic headlights. Um, you can come over to your manual headlight and you also have your fog lights and driving lights hazards, dimmers, vents, your dash is laid out, you have a driver display here in the middle on the Volvo chassis that have about 300 different um, gauge packages or gauge combinations that you can choose from. 
Um, this is set up for your battery and your fuel economy. Tells you what gear you're in. Tells you what brake, uh, engine brake lever you're in. Um, tells you you're in economy mode, whether the either economy or performance. Your time. Uh, there's a bunch of different combinations you can put on. Um, you've got your fuel. You, uh, fuel here. You've got your um, DEF fluid, which is the new fluid for the emission standards. Oil pressure, temperatures, barometer, um, air gauges, uh, both front and rear. Your tack gauge, your speedometer. Um, here's your parking brake, trailer brake. Um, this is for your engine brake, uh, so you can set it into in five different stages. You have off, uh, automatic, one, two, three, and then you have a boost brake. All within. When you're holding onto the steering wheel, you may have noticed me when we were coming to a stop. Absolutely. Feathering back and forth to, to keep more of a comfort uh, braking on it. This is your uh, windshield wiper controls. You also have on top here, this is how you navigate through the driver display. It's almost like a escape on your computer or a back button. And then this is the enter button so you can escape out to the main um, menu and then you can navigate down through that menu and then you can go back into the menu to find different gauges there's your outside temperature for example um, we do have some auxiliary switches down here that can be hooked up for different lights um, maybe a trailer light or a trailer camera uh, things of that nature here's your auxiliary ports for the radio both USB and 8th inch you have your um, locking rear differentials here this is your uh, suspension um, where you let the air out of your rear suspension to drop your axles. This is your heel brake assist when I was telling about coming to a stop on an incline. You'll see that symbol come up on your dash and it will hold your brake. If you want to release that, you just simply push that button and it will release the brake so you can, so you can go off uh, from the stop. Down a grade and you don't need torque or horsepower, it'll put your transmission, your transmission gear into neutral and you'll actually coast down the hill and run at 700 rpms it's a it's a fuel economy savings on there and then you your traction control all of your air conditioning and heating controls here this is your camera selector for your backup cameras or your side cameras it does have side bullet cameras when you're making a turn it'll shift the cameras to that side oh cool so it actually uh shows up right here on the yep. display then. Yep. And then this is your R, uh, navigation in your RV tools, uh, backup camera, all in one, all in one item. Your 12 volt plugs. Up here you have a mount for your CB radios, another 12 volt um, power source. This is the microphone for your phones. And then you have your leveling devices up there as well. Awesome. That's absolutely amazing. Then here's your visors. Bring down your sun visors. You have a side visor as well. So really very nice to block off all of your sun, uh, blinding sunspots. And real quick, going back to safety, you mentioned um, these have side airbags? This has a standard driver's side airbag, yes. First, to introduce the three-point um, safety belt in a Class 8 semi-truck. Um, when it comes to safety, Volvo has been the first and, and pioneered all of the decisions when it comes to the safety side. All of our trucks are set up with, with VEST, that's the uh, uh, Volvo Electronic Stability Traction, where if you're coming into a curve and you're going too fast, it'll automatically slow you down so you don't roll over. It's an anti-rollover uh, braking system that is standard on all Volvo trucks. What do you think, G? You want to trade in the Class A? <laughs> I love this thing. What do you think of the ride, Grandma? It's wonderful. <laughs> I really like this one. So, Chris, just to show you that you don't have to break your back and open in the hood of a Class 8 semi truck <laughs> when it's on a Volvo chassis, we're going to have the beautiful G open it up for us. <laughs> Your hood release is right here underneath the, the steering wheel control. Uh -huh. All you have to do is pull that and it releases. Oh, that's so easy. And G, what I'm going to have you do is you're uh -huh. going to lift up right here. Oh. 
on the side of the hood and just open up the hood for me. Lift it. Oh, fancy. And just let it go. Wow, just let it go? Yep, push it on up here. Don't touch it. Oh. There you go. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> That's awesome. That's the whole engine right wow. there. And everything's there for excess. And we just came back. Wow. This is all the stuff on the cold side of the engine, okay? So you're not going to do that on a rear motor mount, the design engine. All of your engine checks, your engine foil, your engine fill, oil fill, oil check, washer reservoir, your, um, your ECM and computer is right in here. A lot of your um, relays and your uh, breakers are in this box here your windshield uh, wiper motors everything's in full access now when you go to start servicing the truck that's on the hot side of the engine and that's on the other the other the other side that's easier to open than my car yeah. <laughs> i'm serious <laughs> and i think this engine probably weighs as much as your entire car <laughs> That is amazing. That's a 600 horsepower D16 Volvo wow. engine with 20, 2,050 foot-pounds of torque. Wow. That is crazy. You won't find that kind of horsepower in anything here in Tampa. <laughs> or that, that torque is just ridiculous. I don't, I've never heard of torque in an RV like that before. Awesome. And when you close the hood, Chris, it's just like a car. It's that easy. And you're done. Well, thanks for having us. This was an awesome experience being able to uh, even ride in this thing. That was absolutely amazing. And this particular model is the, uh, the, the Hallmark. This is the Hallmark Coach. If you want more information, just go to hallmarkmotorcoaches.com or check us out at Chris Travels on YouTube. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Oh, it's a beauty. Hey everybody, Chris here. And G. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Please hit that like button if you could, and if you have done so already, please hit that subscribe button. And be sure to check out our latest videos from the Tampa RV Super Show, and also all of our videos about moving into our new Class A. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Catch you later.